Today we're looking at the deviance in GLMs. The deviance forms the basis for making up F tests, chi square tests in the GLMs. The deviance here is defined as two times the log likelihood of a saturated model minus the log likelihood of a fitted model. Essentially, this thing is a likelihood ratio. The saturated model is one where you have a perfect fit, and I'll explain how you get perfect fit in a moment. So what this is saying is, if our fitted model uh, explains it as pretty much as well as the saturated model, then this difference should be close to zero. Notice since the log likelihood ratio is a log likelihood ratio of the saturated model is as good as you can get, this here is bigger than this number, so the deviance uh, cannot be l less than zero. So, saying this another way, for a model, if a deviance is close or small, close to zero, then that means our fitted model is said to be pretty good in relationship to this saturated model, which serves as a benchmark, because in itself is no use. No use as a model for explaining the data. Okay, this um, definition, something to be said about the definition of this deviance, is not universal. So here we've defined it to be this, but some other authors define the deviance to be the dispersion parameter multiplied by this d. And for a good reason, as we'll see in, when we look at an example. And then they'll call this guy the scale deviance. In the packet, in the program R, this d is called the residual deviance. I'm a bit put off at the moment because outside they're playing horrendous music. Ugh. Okay, so first of all, let's just derive a deviance, and then that's part A, and then part B, we'll find a deviance where the response is normal. Right, so just to simplify matters, initially just set this dispersion parameter to 1, and let's look at half of a deviance of i observation. You can see it's just like this. Okay, where I denote theta tilde as a natural canonical parameter for the saturated model, and theta hat to be the natural parameter for the fitted model which is smaller than the saturated model. So we need to find what theta tilde and theta hat are in terms of the knowns. So the natural link function means that we're going to set theta to the linear predictor. So it means this. So that's theta hat taken care of. That's expressed in terms of beta hat to be estimated. In the saturated model, right, how do we get the saturated model? How do we get this perfect fit? We get the perfect fit by setting the estimated mean for the i observation to the actual observation. You can't do better than that. That's a perfect, that's a perfect explanation. And then we do that for each observation. This ensures the perfect fit. But what is the relationship of the mu's to the theta? Well, we know, I've proved it, that the mean of response is equal to this. So since the C prime, I, the derivative of the C here, first derivative is invertible, we'll get this, but mu is equal to the observation. So it simplifies, even, so we can write it like this. In other words, we can relate theta to the actual observed values for the y for each observation, like so. Right, so putting all together, substituting all these things into the into the deviance, we have this expression, and we're done. So notice, guys, like if this difference is close to zero, i.e., this linear predictor is approximately theta tilde i for every i, and that means that this difference will be close to zero, and that means this will be close to this. Am I missing a, a wrong sign here? Yes, I must be because um, and this was one way to check your answer because you know intuitively you can see if this difference is close to zero, then this function must be about equal to this function, so the difference will be close to zero as well. Then d will be close to zero. But I've got two minuses here; that can't be right. There's a plus there, which means up here. So if you understand the problem, this teaches us something else. If you kind of understand a little about what intuitive what should be happening, then you can kind of figure out errors or see errors. Okay, that happened because I took a negative of this and the negative and negative is a plus. That is such a common error to make. Okay then, um, so now okay with this thing here. So for fixed we can say 
this deviance has it some distribution for fixed parameter and assuming the small model is correct as n tends to infinity this d tends towards uh, a random variable that's chi square distributed with degree of freedom n minus p right we're going to look at the relationship between d and we're going to see it's related to the residual sum of squares where y is when y is a is normally distributed so let's uh, this part be of the question why is normal distributed independent assume that sigma is known then we want to find the deviance for this so let's just substitute uh, the components this we typically write as y hat in normal regression normal linear, re linear regression this function c is this guy here writing an exponential form you can do as an exercise and so we can see c as a function of phi uh, theta tilde is that and as a function of theta hat is this uh, not much to say there now we also need something else final fact is derivative of this is theta from here and that means you can see it's mapping uh, theta prime is mapping theta to fill theta in other words as identity function and this also implies that its inverse is identity if you take the inverse of both sides you get this okay well that means for that's for an argument theta so let's replace theta by y i so then we have this substituting these three things in to the deviance I have this expression that's a plus there now and but notice this here is the residual sum of squares now you can see like the how some people have defined it if you defined a deviance to be this d times theta and call that the deviance then that is exactly the residual sum of squares okay we're assuming here that if the model is correct and theta is known then d is not approximately chi-square but is exactly chi-square degree of freedom n minus p so we don't need here n tending to infinity this is an exact result exact finite sample result